Hey everyone, Josh here at Halid RV with a what 8,530 pound or something like that Cougar 34 TSB one owner originally sold right here at Halid RV. This is a big triple slide bunkhouse with a door side slide loaded with windows, camp kitchen, a true quad bunk, automatic leveling, king bed, and like a partridge in a pear tree. There's a lot of rig going on here. And I do apologize if I move at a far more abbreviated pace on this one versus my normal tours. Uh, I was, I, I'm several days behind on a lot of things right now. And then today we had between new and used and everything else, like, I don't know, 11 or 12 more show up. So my, my, the work across my desk just absolutely uh, exploded. Overall, this thing is very, uh, very solid. Um, I can see use, not abuse. There's a couple little areas of use that, I, that I'll point out. A um, couple little glitchy things. Nothing I've seen really major, super concerning. Like that, the little trim around the dinette cushion right there kind of flared out a little bit from people sliding it out. That was actually always a thing on these Cougars. It's one of the reasons they went away from that squared off uh, end on those dinette seats and went to the more uh, radius rounded ones that they're doing today. Theater seat option on here, although one of the things I want to point out is uh, if you prefer just like uh, cuddle uh, action, you can make her cuddlicious. That could actually just be a love seat. A little pontoon style removable armrest right there. And the entertainment in this one is great. That's that's one of the things I think always kind of made this floor plane work is it had a, a good focus on the entertainment center at a time where very few bunkhouses were doing direct viewing entertainment like this. You got the uh, uh, Tootsie Toaster right down below, taking a um, nip out of the air without you know burning up all your propane. And we'll come back to all the kitchen stuff in just a minute because uh, I, I want to take a second to, to go back here through that private rear bunk room or in a sense, like almost like second living room. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> now, as we walk in, uh, I do apologize. It is uh, a little bit dark in here. Where'd the switch go? There we go. One of the two lights is working. This, uh, what's interesting, actually, both light covers, I noticed, are kind of spider cracked. I'm guessing somebody probably tapped it pretty hard trying to get it to work. Maybe one was shorting out at some point. I'm not sure. All I know is that both lens covers are cracked, uh, but only one of the lights work. So, you know, now you know what I know, basically. <laughs> um, and remember how I said this is a true quad bunk. What's really interesting about this one, almost any builder who builds a bunk slide out with a camp kitchen, they give you the big camp kitchen, which is fine, but you lose a bunk. This one has four independent sleeping spaces, which I think is very cool. But what's interesting is how easily this can convert via the, what I like to call, move bunk, get out the way. That bunk is on a gas strut and totally flips up out of the way. And then down below, you can see that we have uh, a little jackknife sofa, which means storage below it. And, uh, you know, you've got storage all the way down and around here, including some handy dresser storage. Now... One of the things that is really nice about this one is it actually includes some hanging closet space here in the bunk room, but you notice it, well, let me get you a better angle on it. You notice it doesn't go all the way deep against the sidewall. So you're like, well, what's going on there? Well, that's actually kitchen storage. If we flip around into the kitchen side of things, interestingly, the pantry is located next to the theater seat, but it works. You see there's storage behind the television. Um, there's excellent, excellent drawer and under counter storage in this one. It is really heavily loaded up on that. That is, by the way, an eight cubic foot gas electric fridge freezer. This was made before the 12 volts just found their way into the RV industry, mind you. But notice all the easy reach outlets in this one. You got uh, like a little, you know, toaster corner back there under the microwave. You've got a little phone charging shelf uh, above the original owner's packet. Not to mention... Perfect little outlet right there for a little bit of griddle action, you know what I mean? Now, one of the really, I think, cool, cool things on this floor plan is the location of all of these windows. Because this, you see the door over there. This is the door side of the RV. This is your viewing side, your campsite. And this is also a dual awning model. So you're looking directly under your own awning under there, which uh, I, I think is pretty cool. Not to mention the fact they're, they all open for breeze. And if somebody knocks on your door, you can kind of side peek them through that uh, slide side airflow window there to see who is that. Now, this is a dual entry bedroom bathroom. 
Uh, so you do have a second sliding privacy door right over there that goes into the bedroom, but uh, notice how you have that extra linen cabinet there. That is made possible by the fact that this doesn't have the world's largest shower. There's going to be some people who probably just went, oh, you had me until right there. It has that corner shower. I don't like that thing. I get it. I respect it. That's why I'm talking about it. But uh, the RV has it. Uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter if, if I like it or not. This is what we have to work with. With the vaulted ceiling, though, in that skylight, it is very tall person compliant. It's just, uh, admittedly, probably a little bit tight for some uh, folks who are a little bit wider than taller, perhaps. Now, from that second bath door, we get up here into the bedroom. One of the first things I want to mention here, it's got a 15,000 BTU air conditioner up top. It's 50 amp. It is ready for a second air conditioner. Um, you know, this is a, a big RV. This is the kind of thing in our new RV lineup uh, that we've actually started quite often uh, putting on a second air straight from the factory just because there is so much cubic foot of space. Something else I want to make you aware of here is I could go, yeah, it's a king bed, and I could quit talking, and that would only be half the truth. It is kind of a king. It's a camp king. It's a weird size bed. It's 70 inches wide and 74 inches long, so it's a short, not quite full width king. It's an, it's an, it's an odd size bed. I just want to make you aware of that for like, you know, if you're going to buy bed sheets or a new mattress or a topper or something. Headboard outlets right up there, though. Very, very nice for our CPAP users. And I love that pocket that's up in here. One of the other things that's very cool is most of the lights that you've seen so far, this was like one of the only years Cougar did this. I always really liked it. They're touch sensitive. I always thought that was just the coolest thing. Now, it's funny when you see one come in, uh, uh, you know, a couple years old, some things you forgot, like the uh, deceptively large stone guard on the nose of this because it looks like it's all just one cream colored nose cap but there's actually a layer of like diamond shield on here like truck bed liner basically protecting this thing uh, from stones and it is actually a gigantic stone guard as I mentioned before this does have automatic leveling you'll see the jacks kind of sticking down the uh, access point for that is like right over here that's one of the things I like here is this is easy to reach. And I'm seeing that heavy duty uh, surge guard in there, that system circuit analyzer. Uh, I'm, more I look at this, the more I'm pretty sure the previous owners are probably just done camping. That's just a theory that I have. I don't have confirmation that. Oh, wow, that's right. I forgot about that. They're called Cougar Half Ton now, which on a giant trailer like this is actually not a name I, I enjoy having to explain to people. I don't really consider this at all half ton towable, by the way. This thing, as long as it is, it's not just the weight. It is long. Ironically, uh, the previous owner of this RV did tow it with a half ton. They had a like custom ordered max payload, max towing package uh, Chevy 1500. Um, actually, I think it was a GMC. It doesn't matter. Um, but they, they had a, uh, a vehicle built specifically to handle this thing. And even then, the owner admitted fully, yeah, no, this is absolutely at the uh, complete maximum of my capacities. And there can be times where it's definitely uncomfortable and a bigger truck would have been a good idea. Now, you may have noticed it has that small awning up front. There's another awning right on the face of the slide. So uh, there's some builders who make a floor plan like this where you have one giant awning over a super slide and... It doesn't feel like you get a lot of awning uh, as a result. And that little low profile camp kitchen, Keystone really nailed it with that with those dual little wing out countertops. I'll give you a pro tip right here, by the way. Sometimes you can really shove those things in there and they can be hard to pull out. This is open underneath. Reach your hand down below and push it out that way. And then you don't end up ripping off that T-molding. Handy little pro tip there for you from your Uncle Josh. Been doing this a while, figured out a couple little tricks. It's like, farmers, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. Well, I've I've, I've touched a, a couple campers uh, in my day. Uh, by the, I mean RVs, not, um, oh Lord, I'm gonna end up in a lawsuit one of these days just for a misunderstood statement like that. Something uh, I'm really impressed with here too, previous owner, uh, although it could use a little bath right now, it's probably been in storage for a while. You can see below just a little surface grime. There's a, like all the gleam left on that, uh, the, the gel coat on that fiberglass still. The decals are not peeled and flaked or anything like that. This was cleaned and conditioned uh, with obvious regularity. The only thing outside really showing any sort of weathering is the spare tire cover. At the same time, most of that's actually wind buffeting and you know, it's doing its job. It's protecting the tire and occasionally the, the cover itself gets a little worn out. 
and not really a surprise to me knowing who owned this previously. Uh, everything up here looks pretty good. Um, these are all the original factory seals, although you can see some touch-up beads, and it looks like the rear termination strip has been redone uh, at one point. But the membrane looks very healthy, doesn't look like it was left to rot. What's interesting to me is the center of both of the super slides has a fun... Oh, I know what they're doing here. They didn't... I was like, why is it dead center in both of the slides? I know exactly what happens here. Um... So you notice how it's kind of bubbled up in the middle? That's completely by intention. What they're doing is there's a wiper seal over top of these super slides, and they're using that to uh, proactively catch that wiper seal to make it purposely flip all the way out. Makes me wonder if maybe they had a little spritz of rain at one point until they figured out what was causing it. You know what? It's actually a pretty creative way of doing things because it's not really gonna wear the seals out. It's not gonna catch and tear anything. That's smart. These seals look like they've been redone. There are definitely some other seals on here which could probably use replacement or at least a couple touch-up beads, but I don't see anything up here that really concerns me overall. One other thing I want to mention on this generation of Cougar, on today's Cougars, every single Cougar is 0 to 100 degree rated. This was made before the Cougar travel trailers were that way. Now the underbelly is enclosed. It is forced air heated doesn't have the extra radiant barriers. It doesn't have the extra um, heat ducting that the new ones have. It doesn't have the tank heaters. So just one little difference is one of the reasons this is a little lighter weight and, and less money than the newer ones. So uh, if you got the truck to handle it, give us a call. Come hitch right up to her. Let, let's get hitched. If not, if you have like a seasonal site or something or you're, you're like going to order a truck or get a truck, we can always just deliver it to your house or your site or whatever works for you. Give us a call. There, there just isn't much we can do. Give us the opportunity. We're, we're pretty creative people. We're, we're willing to work with you. We'll work it out. And thanks again for tuning in. I know I moved a little quicker today. I'm, I'm tired after a long day of recording. The setting sun blinding me right now. And I'm not done yet. So thank you much, as always, for all your support. It really does mean a lot. It is honestly, truly, sometimes the thing that really keeps me going. So thank you very much. Take care. Stay safe. Have fun. And happy camping, everyone.